Hey again, ladies and gentlemen, I have here five packages, so it's time for another mailbag. First one up is this one, and this one doesn't really have any mystery to it, uh, because this one's from Amazon. It is some LED lighting strip, which costs about the same as get... Huh, didn't know they came with a connector. Uh, about as much as getting it from... China, but it came in two days. This was an uh, add-on item from Amazon, and I think it was a six dollars and something for five meters. So yeah, I've got a bunch of LEDs, LED strip specifically, but I don't have many uh, white ones left, and I really needed the light to match because I'm putting this on my new workbench or I guess above and around my new workbench. If you haven't seen the workbench video, um, it's available only on Patreon where I kind of go around the shop here and sort of show everything, my filming area, my I guess my storage solutions and all that stuff. If you want to see it, it will be released to YouTube eventually, but I don't know when. My Patreons are kind enough to support me, so I wanted to give them a nice, long, early access. So if you want to see it, jump over to Patreon. You know, throw a buck in the pot for a month. Um, it really, really helps the channel. So, yeah. These things are just uh, simple LED strips. I guess we should uh, light them up and see what they look like. I was just about to plug in my power supply here, but I just realized that the uh, 25 millimeter jack that I plug my power supply in, t in with um, will probably just work straight on these LEDs because it is 12 volts. Oh, there we go. So these are the little bit smaller ones. They're the 38 something size. They're not the super high power ones and I kind of didn't want the super high power ones. I just need a nice glow. So basically, um, my workbench, as you've seen in that Patreon video, if you've seen it, if not, coming out soon, um, it's just dim. There's not much light being cast over there. So if one length of this is not enough, I'm just going to run it twice. I'm going to offset the strips sort of uh, this way so that the lights kind of go in between each other and give me more light. But yeah, this stuff is super cheap and if I need some more, I'll get some more. I'm probably gonna do some lighting underneath where the shelves are. And so, yeah, if I don't have enough of this, I get another couple strips. Let's go on to the next one. Next one up is this guy here, ordered January 2nd, received January 30th. Cost me almost $7. This is a slightly bigger purchase. And this one was from, yeah, it was from eBay. I think I have some from Banggood today too. Oops, cut right into the Ziploc. So I think I'll bring you a little bit closer to show you what this is. This should be good. Try guessing what it is before I actually get to what it is. Does that give you any hints yet? What about this? Does that help? What if I open this? Do you understand yet? This is actually the um, sort of uh, knife holder for a vinyl cutter. So this is a whole kit of vinyl cutting knives. Oh wow, they're all individually. Yeah, this is a kit of vinyl cutting knives and the holder they go into. These are for vinyl cutters that are like the Cricut, but aren't necessarily for the Cricut. Actually, I don't think this one specifically is for the Cricut, but I believe it'll fit either way. And if you didn't know, how it works is these different colors represent different angles. So different angles of this knife here, hopefully you can tell, uh, different angles are different cutting depths, basically, and how sharp they'll stay for different um, thickness of material. And I don't want to touch this because they're apparently extremely sharp, but they drop into this tool just like that. And you see there, they stick out just a little bit. 
And the way these things work is when you drag it over a surface, if you notice the tip of the blade is actually slightly angled back, it's slightly further back than the middle. So when you drag it over a surface, it's just rotating onto its little pointy end here. See that sort of pokey bit? And whenever side you, you drag it, it's going to spin that blade with the friction. So I bought this because I want to build my own final cutter, maybe a, a bigger one. Basically, I want to build an XY table. I guess that's the simplest way to, to say it. And that XY table, I want to be able to um, laser cut, laser etch, that's two things, uh, vinyl cut, and possibly um, engrave and, um, and, and mill with. So this is part of that series, which is going to happen at some point. And I figured I would get some now, so I don't have to wait for them when I need them. But yeah, this stuff is extremely sharp. If I find some piece of paper, so here's the piece of paper. I should be able to just drag this knife over this piece of paper and cut something. So I'm going to slide that in there. There we go. Let's see if I can cut a shape. I should be able to just hold this straight and drag. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty sharp. I made an impression in my cutting mat too. So yeah, this thing is super sharp. You can get these apparently for around $7. And that includes the holder, just being very careful not to stab myself with a final cutting knife. So there we go. So get your own and build your own along with me. Let's go on to the next one. Next one up is this one, and this one's just full of spoilers. It says charging module QC3.0 times 2 times 2. Looks like I ordered it January 1st, arrived February 13th, $1.60 each. Yeah, that's what they look like. So these would be quick charge modules. I would assume so, at least. I hope so. Hmm. Maybe I'll just chop this end off. Yeah, so it's just a little USB module. Oh, they didn't break the PCB off. Just a little USB module. Um, DC 6 to 30 volts, 32 volts in. Interesting. I thought this would be... I guess I expected it to be a 5 volt in and then it did its own switching, but no, you can put up to 36 volts in and then I presume you plug your phone at this end and it would negotiate a rapid charging speed. I would love to flash these up for you guys, but um, I'm a bit afraid of destroying my phone. It's kind of important to me and I think my phone is the only device I have quick charge on. So that's a little unfortunate, but I guess in another video, I will take a look at these things up close, try to figure out what's going on with them. And if they don't seem like they're going to blow up my phone, then I can plug it in. But for now, um, you're just going to have to call me a chicken and we'll, we can move on. Next one up is one from Banggood. So I will leave the affiliate link for this item in the description below. And um, I think I've said it in the past before that Banggood's not the cheapest place to find a lot of stuff, um, but it is the cheapest place to find some stuff. And this was one of them. So January 20th to February 11th, uh, $12.20. That's with the shipping. Uh, I paid a little bit more for shipping because I wanted it to be insured. Oh, wow. That's a lot smaller than... Two? Okay, let me take a quick look at this because I only ordered one of these, I thought. Huh, well then. Look at that. So 
This is an interesting device. You may not know what it is right off the bat, but you do notice that there is a similarity because this here looks like an NRF 24L01. And if I look closely, it is a, a NRF 24L01, but it has sort of other stuff on it. And in fact, these two are, oh, this guy is just all destroyed. Look at that. This is a pin header that's supposed to be up like that. Oh, I hope it still works. Well, either way, I've got another one, if not. But yeah, these are a multi-protocol transmitter module. So they do um, sort of 2.4 gigahertz transmitting for a, a radio transmitter that has a certain pinout. Let me go get mine and I'll show you what I mean. This device here is my notably filthy, don't worry about that, it's just been sitting out and collecting dust for a while, um, Turnigy 9XR Pro radio. If you ever do get into uh, buying, uh, especially cheap Chinese RCs and stuff, or RC planes, helicopters, cars, whatever, you'll notice that each company's 2.4 gigahertz um, like protocol, I guess, the way the communication goes across is all different. Every company has their own way of doing things. My favorite company is FreeSky, but I've been out of it for a little bit, and someone I respect uh, very much so in the hobby, uh, Bruce Simpson from um, RC Model Reviews, he's saying that uh, Free Sky have been dropping the ball lately. I haven't really got into what the controversy is about, but it used to be the most solid uh, protocol you could use. But that doesn't change the fact that some airplanes and helicopters and whatever, they come with their own little toy remotes. And you don't want to use those crappy little toy remotes, especially if you have your own remote. So I always recommend getting a controller that has these modules built in. So this device is not actually doing any of the transmitting. It is sending it to this module and this module is doing the transmitting. But at the bottom here, there's these five pins and those five pins correspond to the five pins on these multi-protocol modules. So this should plug in just over here and it should be able to to turn on and it'll work with all sorts of different companies protocols so free sky is one of those protocols there's fly sky there's um, uh, spectrum there's futaba there's a lot of different companies with different protocols and these guys here should let you control pretty much any rc drone or plane or whatever just by plugging in this module into these pins on the controller. Now they do make a more complete module that comes in a plastic case, but I figured I can just 3D print my own plastic case and plop it in just like these go. Now I'd love to power this on for you, but the problem is that they uh, this thing has no instructions. I have to go look it up online. And uh, it's actually a little bit um, complex. You have to get the hang of it and then I have to go find a model and bind it to it. I think that deserves its own video, but if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed because I will be doing that, especially since in the winter time here in Canada, it's much easier to fly little micro drones and small things indoors rather than go outdoors where it's windy and snowy, and then you can't really fly much. So knowing that, it looks like I got a two for one deal here. I'll have to go check the listing but these are relatively inexpensive in order to bind your own radio to a nice, fun Chinese toy. Let's go on to the next one. And the last package for today is this one here, which uh, unfortunately is already opened because I needed to have a look at this thing. Uh, ordered January 10th, got a January 20th, close. It was very um, short span because I actually ordered it from China, but it shipped within Canada. It was $15.09, and you'll see why I had to open this. So this guy here is a 
3D printer print surface. And it is special because it's actually two pieces. There's this side here, which is adhesive. And there's this side here, which you print on, but they are two separate pieces. If I could just spread that apart. So they come apart like this. These are a magnetic build plate. And what's nice about this is it's super flexible. So when you print on this surface, you can pick it up and flex it and the part will come right off. If you don't know about 3D printing yet, um, I can explain 3D printing as a frustration between two different things. One, you have to make sure that when you start printing that your print stays stuck to the bed as hard as possible. If through differential cooling or warping or bad adhesion or bad adjustment, if it starts lifting off the bed, your entire 3D print will be ruined. So it needs to stay stuck on the bed. However, it can't be stuck on the bed too well because then when it's done, you're going to ruin your part trying to take it off of the build surface. So this one here is sort of like the compromise because you get a nice textured surface with a lot of surface area to stick to, but you can pull it off of its base. There we go. You can pull it off of its base, twist it a little bit, and the part will come off. And it's also stuck with interesting polarized magnets because if you look, it's stuck like that. And yeah, if I pull it over, you see how it vibrates like that? That's the different magnetic poles attracting themselves. So this is actually a very nice tool, but I have to bring you over to my 3D printer to explain to you why this may not be ideal for my Tron XY uh, X3A. So let's head over there now. So here we see my Tron XY X3A 3D printer. And uh, on the bed right now is this sort of, it's a build surface sticker by Overture, but it's kind of like the build tack if you know what that is. Um, this stuff sticks extremely well but way too well. I ruined a print, try to remove it from the bed, which is what prompted me to get this uh, Tron XY magnetic build surface. So how my printer works, and the as long as you have the X3A, I believe has the same thing, it has a inductive um, end, uh, end stop here and the self-leveling bed. So basically it comes down and touches the aluminum of the bed and that'll light a little light up see there and it'll show that it's at its maximum depth and it'll do that all over the bed to go uh, figure out where the um, bed actually is now i thought because it's inductive that the magnets on this would trigger it but in fact they do not i have this right up to the sensor and it doesn't. So hopefully I'll be able to stick this on and the uh, sensor will be able to find the metal of the bed through this thing. If not, I'll have to order another one with a spring steel build surface rather than this magnetic one. But yeah, I was very disappointed to find out that I can't just stick this on and have it work. If it was a manual leveling bed, it'd be okay. But this auto leveling bed with the inductive sensor simply won't work. And I can't even just drop this down further because it's already almost at its lowest point possible. So yeah, basically I'll have to tear this off and stick this on and see if it can still read with uh, this surface on here. And if it can't, if it can't come close enough to this to read the metal bed underneath I'll just have to order another one so the the metal spring steel ones they're 50 bucks so it's a big difference in price between this $15 one five and $50 five zero but really for the convenience of having something as sticky as the build tack but as easy to release as a magnetic bed it might be worth it and this neat assortment of stuff makes up 
today's mailbag. I want to thank my Patreons once again. They are awesome individuals. If you want to be an awesome individual, check out the link in the description for my Patreon page. I want to thank my viewers and commenters for making sure that um, I understand that even the ones who don't want to or can't support me financially are also interested. Um, I love that you guys come in and uh, chat with each other and give me ideas. And I want to thank you all for watching. See you on the next one.